baby. Man, chilling with the nappy head assassins over here on the coop. Huh? You did? <laughs> How you, what you remember about the nappy head? Oh man, every man, man. That was cold work, man. Very <laughs> that. Cold work. I need me a CD too. Start this shit, fuck you know, you don't know, I'm Sid Swift, aka the Beast, aka the General, aka Sidney Frazier, and uh, you know, we're gonna drop some jewels on like uh, the greatest, the greatest group that ever or never or possibly could have been and really was in the hearts of uh, the Nappy Head Assassin. This is uh, Demetrius Monroe, a.k.a. Cos, somebody say Cosmic Commander, <laughs> from back in the day. Uh, yeah, chilling downtown. Dan Keith, Horatio White, my rap name. They went, I went by the rap name, they call me Inch. Yeah, they call me Inch. So what's up to the camera, dude? They call me Inch. Justin Carl. My maiden name. Rip was my rap name. Rip Justice. Um, some people call me Rip. Some people call me Diddy. Like different names. My name is Mo McCoy. I was also known as Mo Money and the Nappy Head Assassins. And then uh, I switched my name to Mo Money McCoy for branding. Well, you know what I'm saying, freedom of speech, but AKA known for a long time was uh, Deja, AKA Mandini. Back in our day, we had a lot of AKAs. Uh, also, uh, Kidnap, you know what I mean? So, we're on the way, not here for life. All right, originally, how they say, I'm the youngest of the group. I go by how they say up on the poster. I was Gold Lord right there, you know what I'm saying, the youngest. These are my brothers, all my vets that I grew up behind right here. We originally over here up on the coop, this is where everything started. You know what I'm saying? I'm a little guy. We started from the Brooks, how they say? All the way back to 999, baby. You know what yeah. I'm saying? NHA. Yeah. DJ Nap. I'm gonna go by government. Franklin Kendrick, AKA DJ Nap. I guess what, the first thing I think about is how, how, how it started, right? Uh, people don't know, you know, before Nappy had assassins, you know? It goes back to the five, the five man crew, you know? And uh, there was two events I remember as a kid that really sparked the fire, uh, sparked, sparked just wanting to be an MC, you know? Cause me growing up, hip hop was always in the house, you know? It was like, uh, moms played everything. Moms, moms was no longer here. She, she was a type, she didn't want to hear nothing old. You know, she was like, nah, I don't want to hear no old shit. Play me some new shit, what's going on today? So, from everything from LL to, to NWA to uh, Big Daddy Kane to Rock Him, I got some tapes my mom played in her Grand Am, you know? And uh, it's crazy when I think about it. You know, mom's, she, she wouldn't let me say the words, but she knew I was saying the words. You know, my first ass whooping was because of uh, LL Cool J, you know, uh, I ain't met a motherfucker who could do it. Ah, I caught it right there in the front seat, you know. I say all that to say, you know, that was my first experience with hip hop. Okay, um, it started uh, in my sister's bedroom. My sister used to listen to a lot of music and mother used to get mad at her for, yell, uh, for, for, for playing it loud. And so I used to go and chill with my sister Jeanette. Shout out Jeanette. Jeanette Monroe. Uh, yeah, I used to uh, chill with her and she was like, Michi, you know, the best way that you can express yourself is through music. And I said, what you mean by that, sis? What you mean express yourself? And she said, all that anger, hurt, frustration, you can let it out on paper, you know what I mean? If a girl hurts you or whatever, you can talk about it on paper, you can tell stories. So I take it to the beginning and my man Kaz, you know, he started it from me. But if I'm gonna be truthful, that really come from his sister. Practicing how to write, and uh, I came up with a, 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 a song called Woman Thing. 
And it, the song was about how a woman be tripping, you know what I'm saying, and be on they on they on they shit when they when they deal with a man. Yeah, woman thing. Once had a girl. Once had a girl. Her name was T. I bought it every day. I could see. The one little problem, she didn't like sports. She liked chains and cars and things of that sort. I tried to buy a Bulls warm up suit. She said, I hate basketball, but Michael Jordan's cute. You know, it was just, it was just expressing yourself and how women react to men on certain things and don't understand men and, and, and that this that and the other and i remember i was blown away as he spit it because he did it with conviction i mean we was kids but he did it like like he was a star already and, and just the competitive nature in me i'm thinking the whole time like man this motherfucker he done did something i ain't did yet that's what i'm thinking like man this shit fresh like i can do that i can really do that so that's how really it started, man. I went to I went to the crib that night. I was just amazed. I was like, he playing the drums and rapping. I was like, I gotta do this. I gotta do this. So we signed up for uh, the next one, and we all did the song together. So we had a song. Everybody perfected their verses. Everybody, we get to the point, and, and, and Kaz and Rip, they play drums. So they put their drum sets together. Uh, my favorite thing in, in music was uh, I started out uh, playing the drums. Uh, it was me and Rip. Uh, yeah, I know him as Rip. I know him as Justin. Uh, playing the drums, man, and, and, and vibing it off off the beats and really feeling the beat and the music and letting the music take you wherever you, it is that you're trying to go. Well, I grew up playing the drums in church. And, um, I played them for many years. Always loved uh, music, man, and uh, hip hop. You know, was a was a focal point in my life from the beginning. With my mom playing music records, old records, and I love music, singing the old school R and B. Uh, and then I came across a guy named uh, Mo McCoy. Uh, about second grade, uh, we went to elementary school together, and uh, we started a, a group called Thunder and Lightning. You know what I mean? We also had a, a cat named Jamie Banks. He was our beatboxer, and so that's how we first started going to school every day, coming up with another line. You know what I mean? You know that old school type of flavor too. You know that one syllable. You know, no metaphor really, but we didn't know too much. We were young, but yeah. So me and Mo got kind of like closer. You know, I was at his house every single day of the school year, every day, working on something. Or in my basement, you know, at my grandparents' house, you know, things like that. That's where, you know, the music started to take hold of. We uh, needed a beat, we needed a beat. So we heard that this one guy named Big Nap, we call him Big Nap now, but his name was Big Frank back then. He, <laughs> he made beats, so we walked around the block to Cooper, and then he had the beats in the basement. We would uh, we would all go over to um, Izzy Dope's studio, Dirt Sound. No, oh, I mean my first experience was, it was funny. Like there was some guys I grew up with uh, around the corner from uh, where I grew up at. And they were like we do music in the basement. I was like, man, I want to do that. You know, make some beats. And then they were laughing at me. So they were like, oh man, you can't do that. I said, okay, that's cool. And then one day, uh, me and Mo, Mo and Mo said. Um, had, you know, had a, they, they had a crew coming on, you know, a little group, and then um, they did a lean to the side, and then then we ended up going, um, they ended up connecting with Izzy, Izzy Dope. And Izzy was like, I'll show you how to do it. Izzy was just like, you know, just, he, he's a good teacher, you know, he still teaches me stuff to this day. I'm very grateful for that man, because he showed me a lot with music. Um, if, he, if he didn't show me, I think, I don't think I'd be making beats and stuff. Oh, Big Nap, that's Big Frank, you know, I New, new nap from being little on, growing up on Cooper. Shaft D stayed on Cooper. His mama stayed on Cooper. You know what I'm saying? And I watched Frankie. We all grew up together. He a little younger than me, but you know. And he was nice with it. He used to come over to the house and shit. And we'll, we'll work on beats. And you know, he wanted to know about the break beats and shit like that. Nap, nap, he real nice too. He, he, he developed in the game. That's my boy. Uh, you know, Nap, Mo, Swift, Rip, um, Wax, 
me, B Brad, uh, you got Mal, Mike Brent, Mark uh, uh, Quay, shit, this little guy. Uh, there's a lot of us, man. Like, shit, these niggas taught me how to rap for real. I used to want to sing. Shit, like, like Terrence, them, you know what I mean? And Jamie, them. Over here, down from the old set where Cooper used to, how they say? The first studio where everything started at. Yeah. Right there, Big Nap crib up over there. I remember seeing the Pam Greer poster in the basement. <laughs> the Big Nap up on the ones and twos, scratching it up. Me learning from Big Bro, you know, Mo. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Jack King, my brother King. Every one of these cats up on here. Yeah. This is classical right here, y'all. Yeah. One in the making, you know what I'm saying? So, me and Justin uh, would, would, would put our drum sets together. He had a drum set and I had a drum set. And what we do is combine our drum sets and he would sit down and play the, uh, the, 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 the rhythm and I'd go with the, over the top of him with the tom-toms and play a little, a, little, uh, uh, a little tune or something. And uh, we used to do that in the garage for a while and, and people from the neighborhood would stop and, and come and hear us and little females or whatever would come and, 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 and kick it with us and, and enjoy our music. And the, the cats that I used to hang with around, around the neighborhood started coming over like Mo and Sid and, 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 and Tyson, and, and, and they was like interested, like, okay, we can do something with this. This, this, we, we, we feel this. This is what we like, and it just, it just took off from there, man. Uh, people started getting ideas. Uh, we started getting real tight, uh, practicing every day. We had a little tape recorder, one of those little tape recorders with the little tape, and we used to record ourselves and, 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 and freestyle and just perfect our craft and, and come up with a vision. You know what I mean? About where we trying to go. Um, with the Flex City, with the Nappy Assassin, the first thing was when Mo and Sid had the, uh, the crew, it was, uh, it was the five man, the five man crew. And um, I was like, well, I'm starting to make beats. And so I ended up getting um, another older, older gentleman named George. He passed away years ago. He had hooked me up with a couple of Casio keyboards with the four little pads on it that you sample once you have a mic. And uh, so I ended up getting two of those. And I started sampling a little bit with them, just making you know, a lot of basic stuff. Um, and I don't know, you know, gave him gave a beat and the rest of the Oh, yeah, man. They, they was like the baby dirt sound. That's what I, how I looked at them, because they all had their own individual styles, man. Mo, he was one of the main ones. You know, Sid Swift, uh, Michi, he was a man. All of them, Lil Cuz, Tyson, all, it was, man, they all was nice, man. They was some young niggas, and they came to me. I always had a studio, I had one in the basement. You know, Lil Cuz, them be down there, you know. Man, Cuz, put me on, let me hear some of that. When he first rapped, it was like, damn, boy, you got it. He was like, man, these my, my my people, they rap too. Man, when I started hearing them, yeah, they all was nice. They all had their own individual style, you know? Two block radius that was like 10 brothers who was the same age, had some of the same interests. We didn't know it yet at this point. That's when other members start joining in. Uh, we looked up, we had 10 members. We were like, man. So we had to come up with a name. And so we were thinking about names. Um, and uh, actually, one of the members' names, uh, Killer B. And he was like, the nappy head assassin. Just said it while we were at school one day. I was like, yeah, that's it. That's it right there. That's it. That's it. So we made, uh, we had two groups, and we made it all one group. And we were the nappy head assassins. Because we was all a group. We came out with some of our group friends and But we still had other members. That was part of the group. So we came together we were the nappy head uh, Man, music itself, period. I mean, but I got into lyrics. We fell in love with the New York shit, so. Like we emulated them niggas, I did. I mean, I can't speak for nobody else, but anybody with lyrics. That's what, you know what I mean? That's what got me. Funny, nappy head story. Um, uh, we, we, we did a show at uh, GRCC downtown, the community college. And it was just like four of us that used to smoke and drink, you know what I mean? Like, like hippies and shit, so. Uh, 
to fuck around, got that shit spent by like man, three, four hundred dollars. Four motherfuckers. Down there for the kill ourselves. And uh, we cracking the bottles and shit. Police pull right up on us, man. And I pull up like they were watching us. Pull the flashlight on us. Made us pull all that shit out, dump all the weed out. And, uh, but we had a backup plan. My nigga Deja. It wasn't that much, but shit. Like, we broke bread. We still got right. One night we just rocking, we going, we going hard. We like, we had the, we had Chris Thomas. I think that's what was going on on Rap City. So we on Chris Thomas Rap City performing, and, and this old white guy pulls up and say, "Listen, y'all sound good. Come in the church and perform for us." Now, we young at this point, you know. I knew church. But at no point did I think he expected something from church. It's like you heard us just talking about women. You know, that's what he was talking about. So we didn't think nothing of it. We went and performed, and we killed it. They was they was jumping around, and but when I think about it, like we had a church folks, and we talked about how women ain't shit, really, man. <laughs> but they supported it, man, and that was the most beautiful thing, man. It was different cultures, it was different, a whole different vibe, but you know they supported the energy and they supported these young black kids trying to do something positive, something different than what they've seen. Okay, when I was a kid, I started in the group when I was 12. Our album came out when I was 13. I was writing my own raps and everything of that nature. I learned, as I stated, from all my older brothers. I used to walk around this here corner from Fuller all the way around here. And I'm going to tell you this, y'all. Mo is the brains and has always been the brains of this operation, man. Mo is the one that, that net networked, put the focus in, the goals. I mean, this dude, this dude, when it came to brains, had it. He's the one that kept us together and pushed us forward and, and, and put us to the next notch, I think. Because I don't know if we was as, as serious as we should have been. I think we was just doing it, just something to do. And Mo was like, we can really do something with this if we apply it in a certain way. And he knew how to do that, which we didn't know. So, yeah, shout out Big Mo. He was on his own thing, but he came around and got molded. You know what I'm saying? Boy, I always had skills and was talented. You know, y'all see that? You know, I was thinking about this too, man. One of the most memorable shows is uh, the one that we did at St. Cecilia. That's one of them, St. Cecilia. Um, the reason being is, uh, you know, we had a lot of rap crews around here. You know what I'm saying? We got love from everybody. But it was just one thing that kind of, it's actually two shows, but I'll talk about this one in particular is uh, when we were at St. Cecilia that when we got on stage, man, it was, it was packed, man. Like all the crews, one way. You know what I'm saying? Boom camp. Everybody was in that building. But the most thing, or the most, I would say, the best thing that made me feel the best was when I was on the mic. And I started my verse. And I seen this shadow coming down the hallway, damn near in a full sprint. And coming to the front of the stage with a flashlight. And it was Scoop B. You know what I'm saying? A pioneer from around here, man. Big up. Rest in peace, Scoop B. And that just lifted me up, man. That took me to a whole nother level, man. Like when Mo was in the driveway, I could kill a beat. And it was hard to kill it. And Mo, <laughs> Mo had, had this uh, Pontiac, uh, it was Bonneville. Or, it was something like that. It was arguing. And Brad was like, man, he didn't want to move. They just arguing. Mo like, man, move. Move out the way. Get the hell out my way. He didn't want to move. So, you know, this is winter time. Mo hit that gas and just boop, boop, ran right over him, man. I mean, <laughs> in my driveway. That was the craziest thing, though. I got my man Mo Money, who I first met on some, you know, Debo shit. He was like Debo in the neighborhood, you know? So he met like that, but then it came out, he got rhymes too. He got <laughs> Like, hey, oh hell yeah, man. Big Nat beat my ass all the way in this house, my house. I came out with the broom on him. Uh, that's family, man. Then, you know, I ain't gonna say no names, but a lot of them niggas used to fight each other, smack the shit out of each other like motherfucking three stooges and shit. But, you know what I'm saying? We fight, the next day we'll be playing and shit. You no, no guns and shit, but a nigga will get on your ass. We supposed to catch the bus, you know. <laughs> Every day, we it's a long walk. We're not supposed to walk because it's 
kids and so um, Mo and I decided to walk home that day uh, because we thought we were grown kids. Uh, so we are uh, walking up the uh, hall and it turned out Franklin. And as we walk, we do it all the time, but we did sneak away. Uh, we always crossed it to Franklin Street. And at this time, it was a bad choice. As soon as I step out on the street, I hear Mo say, no! <laughs> the next thing I know, I'm in the air. I got flipped. I got hit probably by the biggest, I don't know, Buick Baby Blue. That's all I remember when I was in the air. I could see the Baby Blue kinds I'm flipping, and I hit the ground. And um, I was out for a little bit, and I remember. <laughs> Mo told me this story later on, that, uh, that I was more worried about my pants than anything. Cause they started to cut my pants. They had no reason to cut my pants. Man, these pants, but I love those pants. And uh, Mo, you know, being the guy that he is, he uh, ran and got help. You know, the nearest person he could. And uh, but yeah, that's what it's not funny, but it's a story that you know. I knew that was gonna be my brother for life after that. You know, he really got help from me. And he tried to stop me, but it was just a, a situation I couldn't control. So God saved me. I wasn't hurt. Only thing I was hurt. Was my heart because of my damn pants. <laughs> Don't watch this. Don't no watch. I did not ever came across that. I don't even see none of my brothers even beefed out up over anything. Me personally, you know what I'm saying? I've never seen that go up on. <laughs> I remember one with Tyson. With Deja. I was in the basement. Deja would always come down there and just go. I had a freezer down there in the refrigerator. He just come up in there and just take whatever we have. Any snacks or drinks somebody have, he just take it and and just drink and eat it. You don't even say nothing like, hey, can I have some of this or whatever? So I remember the apple juice bottle. I ended up getting some um, some human liquids in there. <laughs> Tyson came down there, took it out of the freezer, the freezer and drank it. That was, a, man, that, was, that was funny, man. Oh, we used to fight all the time. Me? Oh, yeah. Uh, Tori, Tori used to be with that. Y'all know Tori Carter. Shout out Tori Carter. Man, I love you, dude. Uh, can't wait to you get back out here and do your thing, man. Uh, yeah, Tori was, was with us back then, singing and, and helping us with staying focused and learning how to uh, put R&B in the mix with, with rap. And, uh, well, him and Sid call themselves jumping me one time. I said, oh, they, him and Sid jumped me in the backyard. With a, Tori went and grabbed a wiffle ball bat. Sid did his thing. Sid Swift. Shout out Sid Swift. Yeah, that's what I remember, man. That's that's probably the only fight I already got into. I won that fight too, Swift and Tori. I whooped y'all ass. Don't forget it. Don't forget it. You know, but nothing I, I would never hold a grudge against, you know, whatever. You know, because it would be that, that argument. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. Guess what? The next day we smoking a bag together. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So talk about it, hash that shit out. Because back then, like Mo said, we smoked my, we had more faces than a totem pole. And that's what we did. We smoked a lot of grass. I think we was all brotherhood. We was like almost like a second chapter of the Wu, you know what I'm saying? A funny story, I remember we used to go to this studio, I think it was over there on the west side. Big Bro could probably quote me or something like that. But every time he used to get to like a little time to work, cause I, by me being the youngest again, y'all, I couldn't chill with the other crew. But one thing I would say, like we was one time over there at the studio, they was like, little oh, girl, you gotta get your little young self to the house. You can't be hanging with the big boys or something like that. But you know what I'm saying, as I want to say, one thing I would say about, you know, all my brothers within the Nappy Hills, they always gave me good advice. Just keeping up out of trouble, you know what I'm saying, making sure that I don't get off into anything dangerous and watching the crowd that I keep. So I want to give a shout out to all my brothers too as well for looking out for me. Made me the man who I am now. Uh, I was already in there fucking with my god brother Shimon. That was big nap cousin, so, you know, um, and, and Tyson him and Seed and, and, and uh, Justin, you know what I mean? Justin, we family. You know, we all consider family, so I knew him. So, you know, I had to work. You know, I had to come, you know, for some lyrics. I had to steal shit from them niggas and feed off and put it in my own thing. So, I came in with open arms and just by me growing up with him. You know what I mean? But I was in there because of uh, my god brother Shaman. R.I.P. to uh, Shaman Figures, B Figures, and School B. You know what I mean? R.I.P. Mo hooks up a, a, our tape release party uh, for Nappy Head Joint. And uh, we get on, the, he, he gets a bus for us, a tour bus. And we get off the tour bus and we, we go into the venue or whatever. And uh, I'm drunk as hell. We just got bought little shots and shit. And uh, we got spray bottles of water. And uh, so when we go on stage, they introduce us, we hype. 
and, and I, my verse is about to pop off. And next thing you know, I slip and fall on my back in the middle of the verse. Like, I don't know, everybody laughing and shit. So, I mean, that was probably to me the funniest. You know, I was so hyped, man. And uh, that, that's probably the funniest thing that I remember with the nappy head. We always argue. I mean, that's, that's what brothers do. We argue. You know, if it wasn't an argument between people, it ain't real, you know? I'm not saying fighting is a good thing to do, but I mean, it's genuine. We brothers, we, we don't argue, we'll have disagreements. So to this day, we still argue, but we all still love each other, though. You know, it, it's not, I'm very grateful for it, man. Like, it was more like my brothers than real brothers, you know? Between Mike Spark, the energy, but, but Mo really was like, uh, the, the, the Voltron in it. He put like that battery in it, you know, where where everybody felt like, yeah, we're gonna do this shit, you know. After we went to um, elementary, I went to a different elementary school, about fifth grade, I believe, sixth grade. I think you went to Shawnee, something like that, and I went to Ottawa. And so that got kind of separate for a while. But then we got back towards middle school, and that's where everybody became, you know, becoming friends, started meeting, that's when you meet new people. Um, and plus, um, I was always around the way on Noble Street, you know what I mean, because Noble was a spot, Sid lived over there, uh, Rip lived over there, and I used to be over there because there was a, a family over there, uh, Ray Ortega, you know, all those people over there, Mo lived on Temple, so, and there was a group of kids that used to always play, and I lived a little further away, um, and so we used to always link up, but, with all that being said, when we all got to Ottawa Hills, that's when things started to change. Um, Mo was working on stuff, he was doing music. Me, I was somewhat into it, I was always right, but I never had nothing to do. You know what I mean? I didn't have really, like, nobody I constantly knew that was doing music. Um, so, uh, I believe it started with uh, Mo, Sid, and Brad, because it beat. And Y'all had a name, but as the story goes, I, I gotta throw it out there. Uh, Mike Brent and, and Cuz Quay Fletcher, aka the social worker, was in summer school. And uh, they became the Nabby because all they did was sneak down the hallway. So that's how the story goes, and that kind of adapted to us because we was always one culture, we was always one family, and then we always went to the same high school. So that's kind of how that started. Man, it's mobile, you know what I'm saying? Be a motherfucking president. I'm both for that nigga. That nigga can do any goddamn thing. I mean, man, that nigga, Mo, I love you. You know what the fuck I'm talking about. That nigga talking to me about, about, about God, all types of stuff. Man. Nigga, uh, 100. And main thing, you blessed when he fuck with you. If he fuck with you, he fuck with you. You know what I mean? Ain't no, 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 no shades around him, but uh, we all grew up together. I knew some of his killer folks. See, you know, niggas had wealthy niggas on the team. Mo, them had, uh, Stefano, you know, I was running with the nasty dog niggas, so, you know, I, I had I, I had me a pass, you know what I mean, big up to the McGleach, you know what I mean, all my niggas, I know what time it is. Formation, so what started the five-man crew, it was me, it was, uh, if I ain't mistaken, it was me, Mike, Mike D. Boyce, he was actually the first. He was the first, like, he used to, uh, rest in peace, he was a good brother, but, uh, he had stole one of Rakim rhymes or something, he stole somebody rhymes, I'm the alpha, the you know, omega, without the innocent play that we thought it was his, like, I never knew it wasn't his until I got, like, in my, in my 30s, like, yo, I just, yo, that was my rhyme, like, nah, that was my rhyme, but he sparked it off, man, but he was so dope, I remember his presentation, just his delivery, everything, you know, um, Kaz, Kaz was like a, um, his voice. He was from from New York, but in, in Michigan, and his voice was like something I never heard. So it just complimented the energy. I got my man more money. Right again, it's me, Go Lord, checking back in. He's just showing y'all where everything started at with the nappy heads. We talking about the masters, the uh, master big nappies to be down there on the ones and twos again. This where all the action happened. First nappy head assassin, the 99 apple, aiming for the sky. We still aiming for y'all. You know what I'm saying? This is where everything originated at. So I wanted to bring y'all back to the Brooks, to where everything started. Right over here up on the Cooper Hall. You dig me? This is where everything started. See, I was the last one in the nappies. Not the last one, but I was one of the only last ones because I was kind of a recluse in high school, man. So I spit with everybody. But I remember Tyson. 
I remember hearing Nappy Head in, in high school, you know, but I was just on some, you know, I, I was like a hippie kid, just, just burning, you know, just chilling, you know, writing my rhymes. And I remember like, man, that's dope. I like the name, man. So between Deja and Killer B and, and, and more Money, I don't know where the name originated, really. But I know I wanted to be a part of that shit, you know what I'm saying? And that, that's kind of what happened, man. It's like, yeah, I got to be a part of that shit. Like, anyway. Well, I'm the type that while we were the nappy head. I had to figure out how to get us on the radio, so I became an intern for 1680, the radio station, and uh, I was up there working, playing our music on there, and then M walks the CEO of KJ Records, his name was um, Price West, rest in peace, he, uh, he came in and he was just really interested in the nappy heads, because he had heard it on the radio a lot, so he was like, I want to sign y'all, so he signed us to KJ Records. See, I was the last one in the nap, not the last one, but I was one of the only last ones, because I was kind of a recluse in high school, man, so I spit with everybody, but I remember Tyson, I remember hearing that he had in, in high school, you know, but I was just on some, you know, I, I was like a hippie kid, just, just burning, you know, just chilling, you know, writing my rhymes, and I remember like, man, that's dope, I like the name, man, so between Deja and Killer B, and, and, and money, I don't know where the name originated, really, but I know I wanted to be a part of that shit, you know what I'm saying? And that, that's kind of what happened, man. It's like, yeah, I got to be a part of that shit. Like, anyway. Oh, yeah, Price West. Oh, man, Price West was... Rest in peace, Price West. I, I'm, I'm grateful for Price West because he gave us an opportunity to put a project out. When nobody didn't, you know, we was always making basement tapes and doing stuff like that. Um, only thing that just was, was always, I was always mad with Price was about was that deal with Law Records that we had on the table. Good money. You'll be worrying about what they gonna get. I don't know. I mean, like, you really thought we was gonna make it. Signing the guy. KJ Record. KJ Record. We signing him. Booster, I used to go thinking we're going to be on BET, we're going to have a commercial, our records don't sell because we was the hottest in town. AJ Records, uh, absolutely nothing. I was introduced to that shit by, by Modo, you know what I mean? Uh, KJ Records is just a small label here. He, he was a real, uh, Price Rest was a real estate man and uh, <laughs> and he wanted, he just basically wanted to start a record label, KJ Records. It was on Burton and uh, Brenton, right there. I volunteered to be a um, intern at the at the record label just because I wanted to learn more about record company. I remember one time he uh, got a call from Loud Records, and Loud Records wanted to buy the Nappy Head Assassins. And Loud Records had Fat Joe, The Roots. They they had a lot of different major artists. So I was like, Yeah, take that, take that. And so he was like, no, they just want what I got. I'm like, okay, let's let's figure out what you got here. You know what I'm saying? You got a rap group, you know, spent about five grand on the rap group because he made he got our, our records in, our vinyl records, and then our uh, then we put out a CD. And so um, so <laughs> he it they offered a hundred thousand dollars. I said, Price, man, you need to take that. You need to take that deal. And he wouldn't take it. So we just was, we was all frustrated about that. And then we just kind of, only thing we could do was dismantle the group. The way I took that, I'll never forget the day. We was in that office and uh, we was gonna sign those contracts. And I'm not gonna lie, you probably remember this money, but uh, I was pretty hesitant about it. And I had, you know, somebody that was a lawyer and I was gonna have them read over it. And, you know, it was more of influence. Like, no, my guy signed it, my guy said, but I'm still hesitant. Like, no, I shouldn't do it. You know, cause I didn't really know the guy, you know what I'm saying? Myself personally, but I trust my brother. You know what I'm saying? He knew the guy and uh, I respect that. But I really, I really didn't want to sign that contract. And then to find out after we did sign the contract, how we got jerked, you know, over some petty shit that should have been, you know, taken care of better, 
mm-hmm. as being men, you know, just bow out. Yeah. Let us free. You know what I mean? Just bow out the situation. You can't take us to the next level. You know, yeah. and that's kind of, I got more to say about that. But, I mean, I'll keep it basic like that, that I just feel if we'd have got let loose, we'd have had a, a different plateau. I mean, we were the next thing. Yeah. We were the next thing. And somebody seen that. And they want to hold on and, and keep us clutch, you know, keep a clutch on that. Mm-hmm. I mean, everybody would have got paid, man. If it was about the money, yeah. everybody would have got paid. Who's the baddest motherfuckers around? Baddest motherfuckers around in the city. The youngest motherfuckers that was doing it. Even the older motherfuckers respected us. All of them. We even when we did the, the concert downtown in Saint Cecilia. You know, uh, East Kentwood. Uh, uh, it's multiple places I can name. Like other crews was respecting us. We was well respected. We just was young, you know. Not having that guidance that we needed, but we definitely was bumming up. We came out and around the time the Wu Tang was out, the Boot Clan Cup, the Boot Clan Crip was out. So it was a lot of crews that was out. And we was next aboard. We just didn't know what we had. We only had a back end and the money. But we was that. Definitely. Word. I only did like three or four shows, or uh, the zoo, the down a few a uh, few downtown, the one downtown, the one on bread, and I forgot it was a club. But uh, that shit was man bananas, just like make a nigga really feel like a superstar. You know, a nigga thought he was from the, from the go. You know what I mean? But uh, man, if it wasn't for them niggas, man, I wouldn't be the 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 the, 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 the lyricist that I am today. You know what I mean? Like I said, I started off singing, but when I got around them niggas, hey. That was it, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Took off. Or whatever, you know what I'm saying? And then I think the more older we got, you know, I'm hoping that we could do this reunion album, get together and get back up on tour. You know, yeah. shout out to all the people that's doing their little thing nowadays, you know what I'm saying, with the music, but I think we could always come together, you know what I'm saying? Keep it 100. We have a lot of fun times, bro. We have a lot of fun times, man. Yeah. I wish we really, you know, sometimes I'd be like, man, I don't want to do a reunion, but I really think we should. It'll help us. I think this will help us even rebuild even tighter, you know? We got older, we got families, we matured in the minds. And I think we should do this, you know? Um, I know we are doing our own thing right now, but we can do it. We can do a concert and it'd be dope, man. You know? Even if we got to find it's our own thing, you know? Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. I want it to be uh, uh, my boo. My boo stays true. Forget what other hearties do. We keep it tight like newborn MCs, the chrome mic. I want that one. And let me see what else. Uh, I, I like that aim for the sky joint. I like that one too, man. I think that one, that one. I would love to be part of that. Matt, not good idea. Good idea. Man, hell yeah. I'm the one that sent out the damn text. I sent out that group ass text. And Mo, you the only one that responded. <laughs> I'm always yeah. with you. <laughs> yeah, but I've been waiting for that for years, man, for years. You know, it got to the point where, you know, I was writing. I was real, you know, I'm still a diehard music fan. And I feel I still got, you know, some pain. I got that pedigree. And, you know, we all cut from that same cloth. And I feel like I still got some left to say. Um, but, yeah, hell yeah. I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm always ready. You know what I'm saying? I believe my community is ready, too. I agree. All right. All right, just uh, get up and walk off towards the Hell yeah, I would love to have a nappy head reunion. I just feel like we did such a great job as teenagers growing up. And then and we made such an impact together. You know, I always believe teamwork make the dream work. And uh, you know, these were my guys I grew up with and, and went to school with. It just, it, to me, it makes sense if we would come together and do it one more time. You know, a reunion concert, a documentary, a mini-series, a movie, you know what I'm saying? And then they could go back to whatever they was doing before. But, you know what I'm saying? Peace, love to the to the nappy heads, man. Y'all family, I love y'all, man, you know, with all this shit going on. You know, we gotta stay prayed up. These niggas out here crazy, so, you know, gotta keep some weaponry for their ass, but uh, God first.
You know what I mean? Big up to all my Grand Rapids, my Gun Rule niggas. Peace, love, and blessings. It's your boy, DK. You know what I mean? Peace. You know, keep peace, love, and all like that. Keep God first, you know what I mean? And um, keep doing what you're doing, you know what I'm saying? Don't ever let nobody tell you that you can't achieve anything. Keep conquering towards your goals and maintain and stay in your lane. You'll be good. You heard it from me, God. You know what I mean? Where? I want to. I want them to know first of all that life is a struggle, and everybody got a purpose and a, and a path that they have to take, and it's all about staying focused on that path and learning. And this is the most important thing I want y'all to know: learning from your mistakes, because you are you, you make those mistakes so that later on, by what you learn, you can apply it somewhere else in the future. So it's about learning from the mistakes and applying them later on in the future. So, so that's the main thing I think that, uh, I, and I want people to remember me for my, for my ambition, man. And, and even though I, I, I fell off, I never stayed down, man. I got back up no matter what, get back up. No matter what happens to you in life, man, you have to get the fuck back up and keep going, man. Or else it's over, or else it's over. So I'm just happy to be here, man, still living. I'm still struggling. It's all about the struggle. Everybody's going through it. Um, that's it. Thanks to everybody that, that just supported us, man. You know, and just and still support us. Bet. For real. And All peace right. to my boy, you know. Y'all keep looking out for more money. Five proof yeah. movies, uh, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Five proof films. Yeah. 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 Snacking over the MCs over the head like y'all know, like what, 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 what y'all know? Yo, 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 yeah. yo, yo, we, we got, got that ill flow, fist to fist, blow, uh, blow. We go toe to toe with y'all niggas that don't know. We got that ill flow, yo, 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 yo. Somebody stop me, lyrics so dope, I made the hard copy. Break a one, two, do you copy? Bout to copy, one and a half. Niggas no more for running a half. Holding the stash, causing the crash. Whipping the last, the last, the last, the outlast. I'll put you in cast to take you outcast. Crazy like Jim without mass. I itch without last, you rip without cash. Too fast for the hundred yard dash. Take it deeper than the L-way pass on turf or on grass. I leave you smashed, all broken up like little pieces of hash. Punish shit on the empty tank of gas. Smash the reception and break the contract. You lost, you should have brought your compass with your punk ass. Yo, we got that new flow. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, yo, we got yo, that yo, flow. Yo. Drop it on any topic, keep it hot like the tropics. Niggas, I'm stopping with this poisonous concoction. Give it shots, my tumble ain't blocking. Whack him seeds in the corner pocket. Falling off ain't even the option. 20 years of age, to say the least, this shit is shocking. I'll be putting it down like an assistant John Stockton. All these ticks that be jocking, I'll be telling them they need to stop it. In the sight, I'm not scared to take a fucking hostage. Nappy has blossom, watch your bitch niggas play possum. Don't worry, I got them. I swoop from the sky like I'm from Gotham. This top gun with Without Tom Cruise, see your crews, I bring bad news. Cinderella's with the glass shoes. My deadly script is rip ya and get you open like you was a fucking zipper. Exposed like pictures from mixtures that contaminate the fixtures. This shit ain't hit you like a fit of liquor. 80 proof verbal shots to make the squad sicker. This is the ventricles, you watch the flesh get tender. All pretenders best remember and get in things like the end of November. Yo, yo, we got that ill flow. Fist to fist, blow for blow. We go toe to toe. Y'all niggas that don't know. We got that ill flow. Fist to fist, blow for blow. We go toe to toe with y'all niggas that don't know. Yo, 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 yo. Yo, yo my sight is enormous. Invade sessions like the visitor. Anonymous corpses betray a mic predator. Guns blaze the vigilante. A mic vocalist spit and blaze to slice the enemy. The dope is potent with more prophecies than Moses. Hocus pocus sentences leave the cloud motionless. Yeah, smoking that potent incest has got me out there like Genesis. Genesis. It's no contest, even mics get blessed, even the best get finessed Yo, with lyrics this class A, with more drastic graphics than a video all day I feast on peons, every these lyrical demons, the synthetic get beheaded Erased like CD-ROM icons, the iron hand of vandalists invading your college campuses And my phenomenon, in my prime like Optimus, yo niggas be jogging this My verbal fist hits, and leave brains rolled up like carpets Yo, 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 yo. I forgot to mention. Let me dip into your mental comprehension and give you a taste of fundamental extensions. Blame close range in your mind to outer dimensions. Never end the distances. That's the first strike for stepping on my premises. My pulsating, penetrating, mind menstruating. Full contact will leave you bitch niggas ovulating. Watch and see my philosophy. Put you in a life and death odyssey. You can show your girl for that. I want an apology. Possibly the devil's gotten me, but that still ain't stopping me. Deadly as vaccines explode with sugar like soda caffeine. I'm something like a bad dream. It's mad it seems. Damn, I am, cause I'm never. 
I'm sick of these niggas making bullshit hits. Ever since too legit, with games and trivia. Watch your fertile body grow like the Cosby did Olivia. Deliver on track with the crack home. On the slant like a scoliosis backbone. Let's get that dirt up the dock, so crack with chaperone. Hawk on Texas, the jack, the vocal caliber. I can wait to flip on you any day on your social calendar. Yo, 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 y